Justice Good here, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a surreal HDR effect without actually taking three photos and doing the manual HDR process. So you can take your regular non HDR photos and give them that HDR look. And this is just one example before and after, and another example here before and after. So as you can see, it gives your photo a lot more detail, a lot more contrast, and a cool surreal color. So I'm going to take you to step one and walk you through it. Photos of architecture or buildings with lots of sky in them work well. Also portraits work well. But with your layer selected, use Command J to duplicate it or right click and duplicate and then head over to image adjustments and select the one that says shadows slash highlights. Here we are going to see two sliders, one that says shadows and one highlights with an amount for each. And we just want to take the highlights and drag them up to around 50%. This is going to be different depending on your photo, but what you're looking for is that it brings out some of the details in your highlights, such as the sky here. You can see all these lines and clouds that you couldn't see before. So there's also there's often a lot of great details hiding in there. And then for the shadows, you also want to bring that up just a little bit less than the highlights, somewhere around 30%. But again, don't follow my exact numbers. Use what looks good for the photo that you're using. So somewhere around 30% just to bring up the highlights and shadows a little bit. Now if we click this box that says show more options, we see a few more sliders here, but we only have to worry about a few. This one over here that says mid-tone contrast is one that we want to raise up quite a bit to about plus 50. And this is going to give us that strong contrast that we want in an HDR looking effect. So I'm going to use around plus 60. Now Photoshop will also automatically give you color correction at plus 20. Usually that's fine, but sometimes it can look too much and it can give your photo too vibrant of colors that don't look real. So you can lower them a bit to about plus 10, but I'm just going to leave it to where it is. We also have some sliders here in the highlights and shadows called tonal width and radius. The more width that you give the slider, the more things that it considers highlights. And the less, the more strict it is about what it considers a highlight. So you can play around with these tools if you want to get real detailed, but I'm just going to leave it at about 50%. Also, the radius depends on how sharp the edges of the highlights and shadows are. So the more you put the radius up, the more blurred it gets. We're going to leave it at around 30 pixels to give that slightly blurry HDR effect. So now that you know a little bit more about shadows and highlights, you want to click OK and you can see the difference already. Next you want to take your original photo, right click and duplicate it, or Command J as I said earlier, and drag it above everything in your photo. So now we have back to the original photo. And go to Filter, Other, High Pass. We are going to use a radius of, of about 10 pixels here. And then you want to go to Image, Adjustments, Desaturate. Set the blending mode of this layer to Overlay. And what we just did there was add a small bit of desaturation to our photo and also a lot more contrast, as you can see. Now for the final step, we want to add some surreal looking colors. So head over to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Color Balance, and you should see these three sliders come up. The option for Highlights, Midtones, and Shadows. I'm going to start with Highlights, and you can start either way. I'm going to drag my yellows up a little bit, and my reds up a little bit. And as you can see, that makes my highlights look a lot more pink and warm. Now I'm going to head over to the shadows tone and use the opposite. So I'm going to use blue and a little bit of green and cyan. 
And then I'm going to head over to the midtones and just add some final touches here. Color balance is a pretty simple tool, so just play around with these sliders until you get a nice color that you like. Try to use opposite highlights and shadows to get good balance between your colors. Once you're happy with your color balance, you have your final effect. So it's three easy steps to go from this original photo to this more contrasted and a lot more vibrant looking photo. So try this out on a photo of your own and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.